Uh, I'm sure that we learn a lot from uh, this particular session. No, the idea is, of course, we learn a lot not from this session. We learn a lot from each other and ourselves, right? That's the whole point. So how was your, how was your, uh, so, how was the first semester? How was your first trimester? Oh, the oh, oh my God, okay. Okay. What you sink into these things is difficult to get up there. Challenging as well, ma'am. Challenging as well? Okay. Yeah. Good. Uh, you know, challenging is good. You know about stress, right? There is good stress and bad stress. Yes, yes ma'am. Ma so up to a point, you have to challenge yourself and put stress on yourself. It's when it goes over that threshold that it becomes bad stress, right? And then you have to take care of each other. So, okay, what did I want to talk to you about today? Not the first time you've heard this, not the last time you'll hear it. You are a special group, yeah? You've heard this before from all of us, right? Because you are a special group because you are the pioneers of a new institution. We are building an institution together, right? And you set the tone. Because being a pioneer isn't about being the first. Being a pioneer is you do something new, right? And what I've always told you is that don't be passive receivers of knowledge. Don't take knowledge for granted, like you know, whatever your professors say, whatever we say, you close your eyes and blindly put faith in us and we are going to be sitting on a mountain and giving you knowledge. That's the old way of learning. You know? Um, this, I want you to start this idea of co-constructing knowledge. You are constructing knowledge every day. So, how do you do that? You do that by questioning. Right? It's very okay to receive uh, concepts and theories. Concepts and theories are really important. But then, question your teachers, tell them, how do I apply this theory? Because theories are nonsense unless, unless you actually are able to apply them. Right? So I could sit here and I could give you large yard of communication skills. But at the end of the day, you wouldn't know anything. Because you'll be just receiving my, the value of my experience, which is nothing, it's not your experience. Until you can experience things for yourself, it's not important, right? So today I was supposed to talk to you about the importance of communication skills for lawyers. Which is, I think, Really, if you come to think about it, uh, it's it's a non sequitur, as lawyers think. What does non sequitur mean? Yeah. It's a non sequitur. Non sequitur why? Because the entirety of the profession of law is based on communication. Is it not? I mean, what part of being a lawyer is not about communicating? You start by reading, you're reading the law, you're reading the drafts, you're reading things, and, and you've got to read into the loopholes of the law, because all laws have loopholes, you've got to read into the intent, you've got to read the letter, you've got to be able to interpret, right? So every day you're making meaning out of the law. You've got to be able to speak and be a storyteller, and be able to convince and persuade people to your point of view. Right? You've got to be able to listen very well to things that remain unsaid. Okay. And you've got to listen with all your senses. I've told you this before. Don't just listen with your ears. You've got to be able to sense body language. You've got to be able to judge distances. You've got to be able to think about prodemics, which is time and how time communicates. So the timing of things, when is the time right? There's so many aspects of communication. And as a lawyer, you have to really tap into each aspect. Yeah? But 
most of all, most of all, most, if you ask me what are the two or three most important communication skills for lawyers, I'm going to basically tell you that they are kind A, thinking, your cognitive, always, always alert, you know, B, questioning, and C, listening. Questioning to listen. And to, to me, those are the three most important now you know I don't like sitting and giving one-sided gap, right? Yeah? So, today I have a game I want you to play. So loosely, I think I want to divide you into three groups. Uh, so how many of you are here? One, two, three, four, five, Gisha? Yeah. Six, seven, eight. Just, just see how many people. And then let's divide uh, into three. You can organically divide yourselves or we can divide you however you wish. Three groups. Like Nothing like uh, experiential learning, no? Huh? Yeah. Abhijah, uh, for the country? Yeah. Make groups of six or seven? Yeah. Six. Six? Six. Six, okay. Six, seven, eight. Yeah. So get into groups, come on. And don't sit in one place, come on. Yeah, seven basically then. Seven people? Yeah, seven people. Seven people. Just get into some groups. And you can then hand out. So, who doesn't, all lawyers, how many of you want to do criminal practice eventually? I think everybody wants, wants a nice murder mystery, right? So, here's a murder mystery. Uh, one group, group two, that's yours, and group three, that's yours. Okay. So, there was a dead body found. Okay? The dead body, the police have ascertained through DNA tests or whatever, it was badly mutilated. You know, the face was gone, um, the head, back of the head was gone, but keep the police, keep the keep together. together. Okay, here, hello, 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 police people, come here. These two are the police officers who did the all the investigation. So they are they're, these you what you have is the result of their report. Okay? Now, I am already going to tell you the name of the person who died to make things easier for you. So there was this person called Mr. Agarwala huh? who died. The police were able to ascertain that. The rest of what was all the important facts in the police report are in your cards. Each deck has 16 cards. Out of which one is the question card and 15 clue cards. Okay? So this, these are the facts that these people have been able to ascertain. Right? Your job is to answer the questions over there. You have 20 minutes. Use your questioning skills. Use your cognitive skills. And use your listening skills. Okay? You can ask the questions of the police people who are here, who created this report anyway. So, feel free, at the end of it, answer those questions. So each one, each one, each group is going to come up and make a report. Everybody is going to participate. Yes. Mr. Subramaniam has hired you as his lawyers. So you are going to create the story. You are representing Subramaniam. You are defending him. Okay. Mr. Chatterjee, as you are representing Mr. Chatterjee, and you are the prosecution. Okay? So you are going to create, you know, what you think happened and who is to blame and charge. Who are you going to charge? Okay? So go. You have 20 minutes. You can ask questions. Remember, cognitive skills, questioning skills, listening skills.
Day by day, so we can get Let's, I want to draw a map. Let me give you a little bit of a map. Okay, uh, in the form of a map. Pencil expert. A map this one. Map this one, this one, there's a pencil. There's a pencil here. And mini board.
Okay. Uh, the two of you, you've been questioned by them. You will assess their questioning skills. Okay? And BC sir and I, I cannot, I cannot participate because I know the story, right? So, and I know the story. He will ascertain who's guilty. Okay? Got it? So your job is basically to listen to their reporting and say who's, who's the most convincing and you question them. Okay. Everybody knows their roles? Should we see the cards? And so if yes, please see the cards. Can we have the, uh, the deck, uh, one deck of cards for the... Uh, all three of them, can we have all the decks? And then you return them to the Just uh, give me the deck. Yeah. So the teachers can, can see the decks. Uh, like, someone has to speak or anyone can interrupt? No, no, I think, let everybody interact. Yes, yes. So, uh, as everybody participates, choose a spokesman who will tell the story. Yeah, tell the story. And everybody is open to questions, huh? And you are, you are the defense team for... Who will be the one thinking those things? So the prosecution will lay the case before everybody else. Then Subramanian's team is going to present Subramanian's story. And then Chatterjee's team is going to present Chatterjee's story. Okay? Thank you. 
Mr. Chatterjee had hit Mr. Agarwal with the golf club and he was uh, unconscious and Mr. So Mr. Uh, um, Chatterjee thought that Mr. Agarwal is dead. So then after he wiped off the blood stains from the stick and then he uh, like <laughs> hit, like, hit the yeah, hit, 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 hit the golf hide. club in the sand, sand dunes, dunes and left the car park. No, it was written. It was written that usually they used to meet with an envelope where like. How do you know this time they were? No. Uh, it was written it is in the facts. <laughs> the envelope wasn't there with Mr. Chatterjee. There's no fact. There's no fact. It was. It was written. It says they usually meet. This was not This time it was no. Uh, there was no envelope. Where? There is no nothing like that. No. This time there was no envelope. No, this time they used to. That, yeah, Mr. Chatterjee used, used to hand Mr. Yeah, Agarwal. Used to. Used to. Used to. that there isn't an envelope right now, that's all. But, but if the police had found an envelope, they would have... But there was a envelope oh, which had the fingerprints of Mr. Chatterjee, which was hidden under the sand dunes. Yes. yes. Yeah. But he was carrying a golf club, Miss. Wherein it is not stated that he was carrying an envelope. So it clearly states that there was some men's riya uh, with Mr. Chatterjee while visiting the. What is men's riya? I don't understand. Men's riya is a bad intention of man. They are using legal terms. Come on, you're going to give them that. Yeah. Okay. So after that, uh, when this ha incident happened, so Mr. Chatterjee left the beach. Then after, uh, but the, the thing which we have noticed as per the facts, Mr. Agarwal was not dead till then. After the moment, uh, Mr. Agarwal stood up and he saw Mr. Um, Mr. Chatterjee leaving the beach. But the Subramanyam, Mr. Subramanyam, who was also present in the car parking, who was sitting in his car. So Mr. Um, Mr. So Mr. Um, Agarwal saw that Mr. Subramanam is there and there is a fact that Mr. Agar, uh, and I am going to state a very important fact in this case. The reason why Mr. Uh, Agarwal was blackmailing Mr. Chatterjee was he knew that uh, Mr. Subramanam's wife and Mr. Chatterjee were in contact since very long time. Was having an affair. So yeah, if we have to state that. So in this...
Now, this, if so, suppose today I leave my fingerprint on this table, that does not mean that if anything happens after that, that I will be a suspect here. So they were there because they had to engage, because uh, they used to play golf together, and by mistake, uh, they left the golf club. They don't think anything about you. They're just. Okay, but what about Mr. Agarwal coming out in the flooded place? Because how else? And Mr. Subramanian was there in the parking lot. So how did he come here from the inside? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So uh, we have some. 
strikes when Agarwal and Chatterjee regularly met at the beach. Chatterjee regularly gave uh, envelopes to Agarwal. They did not yeah. share them. So, uh, so here we will assume that uh, uh, Agarwal used to blackmail Chatterjee regularly. So that is why he uh, Chatterjee gave money to him. So this uh, and we also have some thing that Chatterjee loved playing golf. So. Uh, this evening, while he was playing golf, uh, Agarwal called him and asked for more money. So, this time when Agarwal was waiting at the beach for Chatterjee. So, this time when Agarwal was waiting at the beach for Chatterjee, Mr. Chatterjee, uh, after parking his car, instead of uh, bringing him a uh, elbow lock, with him, took a golf rod with him. He wanted the black man to stop. When he told Agarwal that he won't give him any more money, they started arguing and in the heat of the moment, Chatterjee with his golf rod started beating uh, Agarwal. But at this moment, Agarwal, uh, Chatterjee did not want to kill Agarwal. So, uh, uh, he threw his uh, golf rod and started running to his car. Uh, then, uh, this is a big uh, beach and big car parking. So while he uh, re uh, reached his car and when he was leaving the car, uh, car parking, uh, he saw Mr. Agarwal walking towards the exit of the car parking lot. And that is when Jamil, who was standing at the bus stop, saw uh, a man with a bloody face and ran into uh, the bus. And that is why he was pale and shivering. So after uh, seeing uh, Mr. Agarwal leaving the car parking lot and uh, he saw that uh, Mr. Agarwal won't be able to stay alive anymore for longer and he thought that he will be, uh, he will be blamed for this. So the, at this moment he planned to finish him off. So that is when he took some, he took, he wore his golf Club, and then he saw a person. He did not know who he was, but unfortunately he was Subramaniam. So uh, Subramaniam was stressed from his work, and uh, so he thought he'll just go and drink a beer at the beach. So while he was drinking his beer, uh, Chatterjee went up to him uh, and tried to take his bottle away so that he can finish Agarwal off. So after taking his bottle and snatching the bottle, the bottle broke, and that is why he had a Subramaniam had a cut on his right thumb. And then he uh, thought that Chatterjee will be, do something to Subramaniam. That is why Subramaniam ran to his car and left the parking lot. And that is when Chatterjee killed Agarwal and threw the body. That is why there was sent. What time was Chatterjee there before Subramaniam? No, he left the beach and entered the parking lot to go towards his car. Approximately 45 minutes. Not particularly like 45 minutes. Approximately. Yeah. That could be shuffled. Yeah. Objection. Objection. In that case, if Chatterjee, I mean, killed uh, Agarwal, at that time, Subramaniam was, Subramaniam was there because Chatterjee left at 18 and Subramaniam, Subramaniam left at 12. So why Subramaniam informed the police regarding that matter? The Chatterjee left the. Jamil, who was at Etwal at the bus stop, who left pale and shivering, he informed the police yeah. and that uh, there was a man yeah, walking with him. Because yeah, so he left after Chatterjee. Lekin ma'am, Chatterjee left the beach, not the parking lot. He left the beach and was in the parking lot at that time. Yeah, yes, yes ma'am. Hmm. Hmm. Objection. Yes. How did Chatterjee leave before Mr. Agarwal? So Mr. Agarwal left at 8.20? Yeah, so Mr. Agarwal stepped out of the beach and he was in the parking lot with bloody face. Uh, Mr. Uh, Chatterjee... Uh, uh, yes, 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 please. So basically, Mr. Agarwal started going towards the exit and that is when... Uh, this is the beach, this is the car parking lot. So uh, we saw at 8.10, Mr. Chatterjee left from this beach and entered the car parking lot. Now this is a big car parking lot, so he, uh, his car was far, so it took him some time. So at 8.12, uh, Mr. Agarwal started walking and with a bloody face, 
he was walking towards the exit. So uh, that is when, uh, that is why the time is there. So uh, after snatching the bottle away from Subramanyam, who was uh, drinking, uh, he killed uh, him in the van passing and then, then right in.
Fingerprints had to be there. I think they've addressed yes. that yes. point yes. by saying that he wore his uh, golf yeah. clubs. Yeah. Gold yeah. and gloves. Yeah. 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 This thing yeah. still stands in, okay? Right. So, are you done with your. Uh, okay. Prosecution, uh, final statements. Ma'am, they are free. Okay. So before uh, we conclude, there are certain issues and facts with the case. We would like to first raise with the facts. As in the facts, there is clearly mentioned that Mr. Chatterjee left the beach at 8.10. As in his, you guys are stating, as in the, from the defendant from uh, Mr. Subramaniam, they said that Mr. Chatterjee didn't left and he went to Subramaniam and took the bottle. Wherein with the reports which have been submitted by the police, the reason why the police was calling to Mr. Chatterjee was because they saw Mr. Chatterjee in the beach with the help of CCTV. They caught Mr. Chatterjee from so with the no CCTV. No CCTV. So no CCTV. CCTV. So I would like to request the police to come no, up and see. Ma'am, I stated right now. Ma'am, I stated that. No CCTV. No CCTV. No CCTV. No CCTV. No CCTV. The report that the police has given is that there was no CCTV, right? Your fault. Okay. You said that the CCTV was. Yes. Okay. That, that's an individual police thing. I cannot take that into cognizance. I cannot take that into cognizance. I can only take into cognizance what is there in the, in the objection. Okay. So, okay. so uh, if we can, uh, if we as in uh, it was stated by Mr. Chatterjee's side, uh, they stated that they were very friendly with uh, Mr. Chatterjee and Mr. Agarwal were friends with each other and they were having just an, uh, like friendly talk and all that. As in if they were having a friendly talk and if they used to play golf together, then why didn't they have a talk in the golf course where they were playing together? Why did they, um, uh, why did they met in the beach? In the dark, what was the purpose for that? That clearly stated that there was something going on, suspicious, that was something suspicious going between them. And as in it was stated... Yeah, so uh, while they're exchanging uh, on the phone, the beach and not uh, in the official area and not in the golf club, and why was the golf club, club uh, hidden in the sand dunes and not just playing around? And there was blood on the uh, it was not it was just a fingerprint. Yes, as in we have stated that uh, Mr. Chatterjee had a clear mens rea for killing Mr. Agarwal. That is why they tried. They in the in the moment he didn't got the sense that he have to even think about his fingerprint. So he wiped off the blood and then he hit the uh, stick of, of the golf uh, course in the sand dunes and then after he left. And therein when uh, it was stated by Mr. Subramanian sides that. Um, that they had no intention and there, uh, there's no involvement of Mr. Subramaniam in the case, but it's not the fact. Wherein it is clearly stated that Mr. Chatterjee left the beach at 8:10, and it is a fact by the police. It's nothing as an assumption which, uh, which as in prosecution, we are alleging them. It is in fact that Mr. Chatterjee left the beach at 8:10, and it was Mr. Subramaniam who was still the end. And as per the postmortem, it has been reported that the body was found at 9 p.m. and the uh, and the person was dead at 8. 15 and there was a bottle which was found with blood stains and with the fingerprints of Subramaniam. So it is a, uh, as in we have stated before that he went he in the heat of the moment. We even state the fact that there was not a menstrua from the side of Mr. Subramaniam, but there is a clear involvement of both the side. So we would like to request the jury. So the prayer is that uh, Mr. Chatterjee had uh, menstrua, he had the motive to kill him uh, and he had uh, thought out uh, how he would kill him. So uh, Mr. Chatterjee should also be uh, punished and uh, about Mr. Subramaniam, he uh, had a cut on his finger which uh, shows that uh, by mistake the bottle was broken which had, uh, due to which his uh, finger was cut and uh, he was shivering when he came back home, so uh, he was in the state of shock after what he did. And if uh, Subramaniam, Mr. Subramaniam had the motive of killing him, he wouldn't have just uh, thrown the bottle on the beach without wiping off the fingerprints and the uh, blood. So uh, they did not, uh, Mr. Subramaniam did not have the motive of killing him, but uh, things happened and, uh, and he finished the job. Yeah, okay. Final statement. So, uh,
Also, you forgot to mention the drag marks. I'm going to mention. Uh, yeah, I was about to say, ma'am, that. Sorry. If I can. <laughs> First, I would like to ask that uh, how was the time verified? That is, when they were exact time, 8, 10 p.m. So, how was it verified? Because there were no CCTV cameras and there were no eyewitnesses. Because there is no. No, the police must have talked about it. got the facts. That is not in the fact. That is what I am saying. I think those are the facts. Everybody's agreed on. The fact is fact. You have to take that to the fact as fact. So, and uh, so uh, now I will go a bit technical. It is written, he left the beach at 8 10, not the. Uh, yes, that's the point. Well, you yeah. made that point before, yeah. and I agree that yeah. leaving the beach and leaving the car park are not the same thing. Yeah, they are not the same thing. Yeah. And there was one point made that uh, uh, the Mrs. Subramanyam was having an affair. But uh, as my colleague said, that it is uh, yeah, not yes. plausible. Yeah. And uh, I mean that's like an overreach. Yeah, yeah, that's an overreach. And also, uh, they said that why would a wife tell the truth against his husband? So I would like to make a point that no one would be would like to be married to a murderer if he indeed committed a murder, right? Okay, and it could also be just that the woman is being honest. Yeah. I mean, she, she is a person who has been accused of a crime.
point of view, from Mr. Chatterjee's point of view, from the prosecution's point of view. That's how you create the story. The observation, very important. Questioning, very important. Listening is something I saw a little bit of thoda kam kar rahe the listening, right? <laughs> because you were listening to yourself. You're not listening to the others, not listening. And that's really the, the most important way to gain any information. Is when you listen carefully to what others are saying. Okay? What else? What else? What else takeaways? Come on. What else did you learn today? Reading properly because you have the fact. How do you read them? How do you read them? Right. How do you make meaning of what is written? How to collect the facts? How do you collect them? How you organize them? Right. And I think you did a good job because you were organizing all other words together, all Subramaniams together, right? So that was a well, well done job. Yeah. Thank you. Huge point. That's what brainstorming is about. That's why you're working in groups. Huh? Because each one you and one of you brings a particular sensibility. And part of communication skills and part of group work and part of brainstorming is you don't stop anybody from bringing any ideas to the table. Nobody will have a full-fledged idea that is viable that you can work with. But any idea can be built on by someone else. And that's what groups are about. They're not about I was right or you were right. That's what group thinking is about, right? Of course, there is something called group think that you have to avoid. You're nodding. What does that mean? Group think? When the entire group thinks the same. The same thing. Because then you're not adding any new information, right? So in a lot of organizations, in a lot of places where like-minded people get together, that's a bad idea. You want a diverse group. Because then you can get diverse ideas in. You have the same kind of people, same kind of background, same kind of thought process. Bad group. Because everybody is thinking the same way. We should listen more to the critic than us. 100%. 100%. Okay? Okay, any other takeaways? Uh, Ma'am, yes. as in before starting the session, you mentioned that how many of us are like oh, willing to go for criminal law. I guess none of uh, none of us said that uh, we would like to continue with it, but after this session, I really now let you know that criminal law is something more, no, not about criminal law. Yeah, yeah. 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 we're feeling more like a detective today. Yeah. Yeah. Feeling more like a detective today. Yeah. Yeah. That's what communication yes. is. Yeah. You know, if communication was as easy, as I can, I say something and you, you get the meaning of it, that doesn't happen. We're all detecting. We're all at any moment of time detecting what is the other person thinking. Right? And here when you talk motives, okay, what else? Anybody else has any other thing of this? Learning is much more than reading books and getting information, of course. Experience. Experiential learning, you will never forget because you experience this, right? So that's that's very important. Okay, I have two things to say. You're going to be professional lawyers, and this is my feedback to you today, right? You were standing here talking to them, right? We call this critical distance. How far you can go? How close you can come. There's no, there's no lecture here. Nobody said you couldn't come here and talk to them. You could have talked to them here. What's the difference between me talking to you here? Much more intimate. I'm looking at your face. I'm holding you. I'm talking to you. I'm using you so much more. If I'm talking from here, do I get the same effect? But, but, but we are talking from here, we are talking to the whole room. Okay, but who are you trying to convince here? I'm like, personal face would be if I went here. This is personal face. See, see what happened to a foot? So this is personal space. <laughs> this is personal space. This is, personal space. This is not personal space. This is I'm still in social space. Okay, but I'm here. I can hook them. I can talk to them. There's the difference. Okay. Yeah, then. BC sir is ultimately going to give you an overall umbrella decision. 
But still, you are trying to prove that your facts are valid. Absolutely. Those are your persuasive skills. You remember Aristotle? Ethos, Logos, Pathos, Kairos. Kairos. Kairos context. Okay. So remember those. You have to be as, look, as lawyers, you are also judicial officers. Which means ethos, ethical. Being correct, helping people come to the right. You know, th there's no point lying. You can interpret facts. You can read loopholes, like I said. But don't lie. You can lie today as a professional. The judge won't believe you again tomorrow. In another case. So as a professional, there's a reputation that you have to build slowly. So ethos is very important. Being correct is very important. And pathos ke bina to nothing, no persuasion happens. Because if you don't get in touch with my emotions, if you cannot connect me with emotions, you're not getting my decision making. Because your cognitive mind doesn't make decisions, you know that. Decisions are made from emotion. And then they are justified by cognition. But decisions are made through emotion. So you've got to keep that in mind. And logos link logic. Whoever has the best logic, whoever is the best storyteller, whoever can do cause effect, cause effect best, can have the most effect because my mind likes to fill up blanks. The moment there is a blank which is not logically connected, I will 
create my own story for it. And Kairos, context. And by context, all of this comes in. Observation, how is the defense acting, how is the judge's body language working, what is, you know, what is my general sense telling me about the room? Have I convinced them? Have I not? How do I change an example? How do I change my stance? Yeah, yeah. Can I say um, something? Um, yes. I think that it's also important that like, it's not just about the truth as much per se since you are defending someone and you're, and the truth is often a very complicated, especially in law. Especially and with, no, especially with, people, with, with, with people, yeah, with people, the truth is a complex thing to get to. So I don't think it matters as much what is truthful. Of course, ethics is important, but not necessarily the truth, as because it, it there is a way in which you have to bend it and twist it because law is a complex thing. There is no so big truth. I don't Let think. This way. I don't there think you should. Truths. I don't think maybe you should approach it with the fact that this is a murderer or that is a defendant or that is a... I think the quest should just be to focus on the client and what the client needs much more than anything else. Like, the more you look at the bigger picture, I think the more you yeah. think I about think your own ethics. Both teams did the right thing by pointing the finger at the others. Yeah. So that is part of your job, is how to deflect. Right? But, but don't lie out there. This is absolutely not that. Right? You can read the thing about 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 you as lawyers also is how many nuances, how many lawyers, how many layers can you read? Like she said, truth is not always a very simple black and white thing. It's a spectrum which has lots of grey. Which greys are going to help you? And human truth is never straightforward. Okay, over to you if you have no more observations, questions or anything to say. Decision. Decision, okay. Yeah, can we have your, your opinions? I saw Roshomon playing out and this is a 12 angry men situation. Okay. 12 angry men and women situation. Okay. So we felt uh, sort of most convinced by the prosecution story, but but we are still not convinced about a lot of things. Uh, one being the coincidence of uh, Mr. Subramaniam being there, we don't buy into it. Second, regarding to Mr. Jamil, Jamil, Jamil his uh, activity was under. Has not been spoken. So, so you are adequately addressed to us. But whether he is telling the truth or not, why had he entered into the having bus stop? Uh, so that was not explained. And for the properly <coughs> defining a motive for Mr. Chatterjee, I mean, that enveloped him to the Essential well, elements. Well, you can see it's not at all convincing. Then she. Then we had a motive for Mr. Sundar and Mr. Rosalind. And I don't know why it went to the mother. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. That, uh, that overreach was like. <laughs> it was a story. But yeah. Yeah. even most convinced by the story, you would say. And it did, it did logically play out that both had a role. Right. Nobody actually right. murdered right. both of them somehow or the other. And uh, you're the first one, it's always special, right? 
So you always have like a, a deeper emotional connect with your first exactly. progeny, right? So as far as energy may is concerned, you guys are special. You are always going to be, we are always going to be more emotionally connected to you than to your future generations. Okay. And you are going to be more emotionally connected to your next, uh, you know, cohort and so on and so forth. You know, that always happens. You are going to be mentoring them. So we are very proud of where you come in, in like two, three months. That, that's excellent. I must say. I saw you when you first came in. I saw you today. And I can see you in the future. Uh, in, in a few years, I can see some of you actually standing in front uh, in a courtroom and actually very convincingly and persuadingly presenting your cases. So some of you who spoke today spoke very well. You will become good storytellers. You will become good. Excellent. I'm happy. Yeah, and you have to take, take to the next level. You know? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you could already see them uh, today in Rajiv that they became more comfortable right. as time went on. The first one they were a little stiff, the second one they were a little more open, right? I could see the body language opening up, the tone of voice being more, more authoritative and convincing. <laughs> Come on, leave it alone, won't do anything to you. So, so if I say that you guys win, everybody will win. Oh, he's taking the easy way out. <laughs> no, no, no. Three groups, don't take the easy way out. <laughs> I think, uh, Madam, you should keep it like that because that uh, motivates for the Sir, if we won't uh, come in a place where like we are expecting us to be, then we'll try much more harder, we'll work on our skills and then we'll come back See, one better. Thing I'll tell you good lawyers. Yes. <laughs> one thing I will tell you in life, uh, you should be your own example. And then you have I think to, that's 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 good advice. And you have to, you know, set the bar for you. Yeah. So there is a nobody will set the bar for you. You have to see that, you know, all of you have said, like you know what ma'am was talking about, that are you observing that what other is doing? You also observe yourself, what you are doing. I think that's excellent advice. And 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 you understand now where you have set your level, now where you have to set the next level. Don't compete with others, compete with yourself. With yourself. So, which I keep telling to my student and even my daughter also, the, the competition is with yourself, not with anybody. <coughs> and how you are creating your benchmarking again and again. Yeah, absolutely. <coughs> Tomorrow if I gave you this exercise, what would you do differently? And these differences don't have to be huge. I always say make small incremental differences. That's the Kaizen principle, right? Exactly. Small incremental differences every day. What could I have done differently? Today, if I'm wearing my trousers and it takes me two minutes to wear my trousers, how can I do it? One minute, 58 seconds tomorrow. What can I do differently to do that? And, and, and keep doing that. You know? And uh, many one of you possibly was not that, uh, you know, Proficient, with aggressive. Some of you are standing in the next row. I know that <coughs> there might be a speaker who have chosen, but some of them was not that much involved or watching the board and everything. If and some start, of you were speaking from the back, sorry to interrupt, but some of you were had the facts. You were speaking from back. You were you were prompting others to speak rather than speaking up yourself. Nobody said you couldn't speak. You should have come up. For instance, you had all the facts. You were giving all these ideas to other people to speak. You know, come up and speak. Exactly. So you have to take your role uh, in the particular team itself, right? And you, you, uh, like you know, some of the day you, some of you have came to me and you said, sir, teachers, teachers are here, you are also here. So after the open uh, house that day, some of you came uh, to me and told me, the so teacher always concentrated on some of us, not picking. Very. Right? Okay. Then, then I said that, well, I'll talk. Now, the thing is, until you speak, you do not draw that attention. Right? Yeah. And even I told your teachers, uh, you know, that you have to make others to speak, but it actually naturally.
naturally doesn't happen. Natural is attention. Yeah. And how how a person like you know Rishi always get more attention than mine because he jump always. <laughs> that fellow. Yeah. Oh, what's your name? I forgot. Utkarsh. Utkarsh is get uh, attention than other. And then other people, people feel, oh, teachers are giving too much attention to these particular people. I am being rejected. Never be rejected. Okay. Uh, I would like to say something here. And that is, yes, today we are talking about uh, communication skills. And you yourself said, look at it from the other person's point of view. Now look at it from the teacher's point of view. They are doing public speaking, right? Every day in class, they are doing public speaking. Now, as a public speaker, I can tell you very clearly, and your teachers will probably agree with me, what are we looking for? When I'm standing in front of you, and I'm giving you information, what am I looking for? Think about it from my point of view. You're here. Interest from your side. How do I gauge interest from your side? And we respond. From your responses. So your responses need not always be verbal. It could be nodding, it could be doing that, it could be doing that, it could be some cues that I'm getting from you, right? So if you're giving the cues and I'm seeing you and I'm addressing you, it's comfortable for me to address people who are responsive. If someone is doing their own thing and not even looking at me and doing, you know, writing notes or doing something and not responding to me, then I'm not looking at them. Communication is never one way. Think about it always from the other person's point of view. You yeah? know? So give your teachers that responsiveness and you will get the attention. Okay. Your, your vibe has to go out from your body. Okay. And that vibe might be oral, might be a gesture, might be even the presence in your body. That also speaks. Oh, it could be a question mark on your face. So, so now, that's the reason I said I will not be a judgmental today. Because, you know, many of the time, what happens the moment we say the judgmental, we always try to take a back fate, right? Oh, that means I cannot go up to the level of Rishi. <coughs> you can go even better than Rishi. You watch yourself. And let me tell you, I come from a very, very, you know, small town background, not with, uh, you know, lot of exposure in life, which I've also told other people that I do. And I used to feel a lot of difficulty, right? You know, to speak with the people and to communicate with the people. And then over the years, I started observing myself where I'm humbly, where I'm faltering, where I'm not able to speak myself properly. And then I started raising a bar for myself. And at a point, some of the, you know, people, like I think one day I told, some of my colleagues have said that I should, uh, you know, practice how to write an uh, essay on the asses. I mean, sometimes people ridicule you, right? Because you don't have that uh, expression capacity. And see, I'm the same person who was uh, so paralyzed with my company. Today I, uh, you know, teach throughout the globe with the top of the universities. My papers are in a very high end channel. With the language, which was I always afraid of. So what I try to mean thereby, that means you know, never you know feel that well, Rishi can do I can. Yeah, and and of course the yeah. the other corollary to what he's saying is so important. If he had stayed within his comfort zone, he would never have come very far. So you have to things that make you uncomfortable do them more. Force yourself to do that. And, uh, so statistics is something he doesn't want to do, but your vice chancellor is making him do it. The moment you get out of your comfort zone, you can see new talents and new potentials in you. Yeah, and they possibly even never fall. You can do that. Yeah. You know, and and then you one day you will find uh, wondering that you are doing. You thought that there's a barrier. And you're doing it so easily. So easily. So, uh, which I keep telling uh, to my daughter also, that if something bothers you, you know, be a master of that. At least push yourself to learn it. To learn it. So, you know, that's that's my essential. And that's the reason I will not take it today. I will again, possibly, ma'am, will again come back and hold the same thing. Another trimester.
will find that those who are today was hesitant to speak, to speak more, uh, come forward more. Okay. And listen, it's not your teacher's job to stand in one place and teach you. It's your job to extract from them what you want. Exactly. It's not a one-way street. Okay. And, and so listen, if they, they take from them. Take more than they want to give. Put them on the spot. Question them. Make them think on their feet. Make them go back to the books and research more because you asked the question. That's your job. And, and this is the reason I was telling the other day. When you were telling, sir, we are not getting handout. I said, all people should play. Right? You need to learn. Nobody can teach you. Right? And why do you need to take God's subjects after you? University can provide an ecosystem, ambience, platform. And you have this wonderful place where the teachers are right there with you all the time. You know, at any given time, tap into them. And get get best out of them. I mean, you will get best out of them. You will get best out of yourself. That's possible. And you know something? Your teachers would love nothing more. Nothing more. I'm telling you this on behalf of all teachers. We like nothing more than being questioned in a manner that makes us think. Tell me I'm wrong. We get bored saying the same thing over and over again. And you know what is the with that? What Madam is telling? What is the pride of teaching? The day you will surpass me, the day you will go, you know, beyond what I could achieve in my life. Oh yeah, absolutely. All teachers are looking for that. I don't know, did you, have you seen Kung Fu Panda? Yes. yes. Do you remember the point where Shifu is like uh, yes. motivating him with that uh, dumpling? Yes. Do yes. you remember when he finally gets the dumpling and then he says, I'm not hungry? Yeah, that is Shifu's greatest, the fact that the panda is not hungry. Okay. 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 Sure. Not many people can do. Yeah. Thank you so much, madam, for uh, coming here. As usual, it's been a pleasure. Hopefully, the pleasure was not one-sided. Okay. Oh, that's so nice. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. See you soon again. And in the meantime, keep keep them on there. Bye. 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 Bye.
but some form of uniform and it's also that identifies you as a lawyer. A, it, it, it is good, it, it access, it, it, te it tells the world that you're a lawyer, and it's more professional because everybody is then, uh, you know, like for instance, you and I, we might have very different dress sensibilities, but if both of us have to wear the same uniform, it just makes it so much more egalitarian. Yeah? Any other questions I can help with? No? Okay, you're done? sessions because in the first trimester it was very frequently in the first two months we saw your presence yeah. very frequently but since then in last one yeah unfortunately I'm going to be leaving Shillong in uh, November, uh, first November I'm but I will definitely be uh, your vice chancellor as long as he decides um, <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm here I'm here for you always huh? you'll see me virtually a lot more probably. Okay. Huh? Okay. Okay. maybe not physically but virtually yeah. Formal behavior makes a uh, person on the other side think that uh, uh, to whom they are communicating are more responsible. Well, let, let me put it this way. What do you think my behavior is like? Is it formal or is it informal? Oh, that's, that's basically what it is. Yeah? There, is a, there is a pleasant mix. When I'm speaking to you, I'm, I'm addressing you, I'm addressing your needs, but there is a formality definitely to this relationship. Yeah. That's what you have to communicate, huh? Uh, but huh. at the end of the discussion, uh, the conclusion is that a mix of uh, informality can be a yeah. game changer. Uh, the mix of informality, uh, yeah, there is a, has to be that personal element to get that pathos. If, otherwise, how do you get emotion into the picture? And unless you and I have some sort of an emotional common ground, the, the conversation is not really convincing. So somehow your client, the judge, your colleagues, anybody you speak to, somehow they must be able to sense that, oh yeah, this person gets me. Oh yeah, we have, I have this in common with this person. Oh yeah, I understand. She understands. She gets me. So there's that we call it empathy. You could call it other words. Basically, it boils down to: is there a common emotional connect somewhere between us in this space? Yeah. So it's like: do you feel like I understand you? And that makes a big difference. You keep asking questions. I'm here. Don't worry. Keep asking them. Uh, so when we go to offices, then why do we uh, wear? Is it uh, why do we always have to wear uh, 
you don't have to. You don't have to. You don't have to. In fact, I tell everybody that you don't develop as you grow. Develop a signature style for yourself. Something that you're comfortable with and something that gives you a little distinctive edge. And I always say dress for who you want to become, not for who you are today. Next yeah, it, it does make sense, but uh, when we enter into corporate world and professional world, the line diminishes. But then the thing is that, that this line that you're talking about, you know, uh, to me it's not very convincing. You know why? Because I can, yeah, obviously, I, if I go into a corporate office, I wouldn't be wearing these jeans, right? But otherwise, I would still be in comfortable clothes. I wouldn't make myself uncomfortable. So there is a, there is propriety, there is appropriateness. Um, you've seen me, you've seen me at um, you know formal occasions like Independence Day or the or like your uh, you know when you when we had that yeah. So I was wearing a sari and stuff like that. But did I look uncomfortable? It was still a sari I was comfortable with. I was wearing it the way I was comfortable. So there is a bandwidth that you can play with. So within the element of, okay, I should be dressed formally, it is, there is a bandwidth, there is a choice. No? So where is your personality within that bandwidth? If I'm able to express myself effectively, then I'll be more comfortable and I'll be, put in more, uh, I'll be able to put in more efforts in my work. One thing I'll tell you, if you are uncomfortable with what you're wearing, if you're uncomfortable with the shoes you're wearing, if you're uncomfortable with the way you've done your hair, then your, your attention is too much on your appearance. Exactly. And not enough on what you're seeing. So then... You know, there is a bandwidth that you have to make the most of. Where do you belong within that band? So, super formality, what's your take on that? You know, corporate formality, what's your take on that? Casual, smart casual, what's your take on that? There is a take that you can each individually be comfortable with. I never wear stilettos, for instance. Never, ever, ever will you ever see me wearing. Never in my life would I, because I'm not, that's not me, I'm not comfortable. You know, from when I was a very young child, I was tall, right? And I, and I always felt like uh, people were looking at me anyway. So wearing stilettos sort of maximized even that. Now, as I've grown older, maybe I'm not that tall, but in my mind, I'm not comfortable with with wearing something that makes me six inches taller. You know? So again, that's me. Somebody else might want to wear stilettos to show off their the, how tall they are. And that's fine too. There's an element of comfort where yeah, you fit in. What's your mental self-image of who you are within that type of environment? So there are boxes. There is a formal box. There is a corporate box. There is a, a semi-formal, smart, casual box, and there is a casual box. Okay, you have within the boxes can leak into each other. They are not like airtight. Any comment? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Oh, the solution. Okay, no, the, the story basically that I have. Look, you can, uh, in in court cases, the, it doesn't matter. But my story was again. The prosecution was very good at it. Of course, the idea was that both Chatterjee and uh, Subramanyam had opportunity. Both of them had motive. Both of them had murder weapons. Uh, and that was necessary for you guys to do. And both of them had a hand in the murder. Right? So one started it, the other completed it. So, <laughs> so you did a good job. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Thank you ma'am. Ma I'm going to go to the cave. I'm going to go to the cave.